welcome to Vision of China. At the end of April, Huawei's Pura 70 series was quietly launched without a formal product release event. This new line of smartphones, featuring Huawei's latest Kirin 9010 processor, has sparked a buying frenzy among Chinese consumers. This launch underscores Huawei's formidable capabilities in both technological development and market strategy, further solidifying its position in the global smartphone market. Recently, the renowned teardown company iFixit, in collaboration with its partner TechSearch International, conducted a teardown of the Pura 70 Pro and analyzed its motherboard components. This teardown not only reveals Huawei's latest achievements in hardware design and manufacturing, but also showcases the breadth and depth of domestic components used in high-end smartphones. First, let's examine the side of the motherboard housing the system on chip. Similar to many modern smartphones, the Kirin 9010 processor is stacked beneath a 12GB SK Hynix DROM chip. After removing the SK Hynix DROM chip, the main components on this side of the motherboard become visible. A close inspection of the Kirin 9010 chip reveals markings similar to the older Kirin 9000S. An industry expert at iFixit noted that this chip's designation is unusual, as new chips typically have distinct model numbers, yet the Kirin 9010 shares the same model number as the Kirin 9000S. Previously, Tech Insights reported that the Kirin 9010 appears to use the same manufacturing process as the Kirin 9000S. It is widely believed that the Kirin 9010's core design is a modified version of the Kirin 9000S, aimed at improving yield. However, these improvements may extend beyond production. Early benchmarks indicate that the Kirin 9010 outperforms the Kirin 9000S by a small percentage. Comparisons between the Kirin 9000S, Kirin 9010, and Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 show that the Kirin 9010 achieves a single-digit percentage performance gain over the Kirin 9000S, although it still falls short of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which is manufactured using TSMC's N4P process. To achieve this slight performance boost, the Kirin 9010's 12-core SoC uses six ARM Cortex A510 efficiency cores running at 1.55 GHz, four Taishan V121 cores at 2.18 GHz, and two Taishan V121 cores at 2.3 GHz. This combination not only enhances the processor's overall performance, but also optimizes power consumption and thermal management, allowing the Pura 70 Pro to maintain stable performance under intensive use. The teardown report also reveals that the Huawei Pura 70 Pro includes one terabyte of NAND flash storage. Analysis of X-ray images by TechSearch shows that the flash memory controller chip on top of the flip chip connected NAND flash consists of eight NAND flash dies. TechSearch speculates that Huawei High Silicon might have designed the accompanying flash memory controller, tested, and package the NAND flash chips, although the memory controller itself lacks markings, making it difficult to confirm this. The supplier of the NAND flash chips is uncertain, as there are no identifying marks on the chip packaging, but it is likely designed and manufactured by a Chinese domestic company. Furthermore, according to a recent Tech Insights report, three of the four image sensors in the Huawei Pura 70 Pro are made by OmniVision, with two manufactured in China. Analyzing the components inside the Pura 70 Pro, out of the 29 listed components, 26 are supplied by Chinese manufacturers, with a domestic content ratio of 90%. Notably, eight of these components appear to be Huawei High Silicon's own chips. This reflects that the domestic component supply chain can comprehensively support the needs of high-end smartphones. On May 17th, the Semiconductor Equipment and Materials International reported that global wafer fab capacity grew by 1.2% in the first quarter of this year, with a projected increase of 1.4% in the second quarter, driven by the continued ramp-up of capacity at new fabs and the recovery of the semiconductor market. Mainland China remains the region with the most significant increase in wafer fab capacity. This growth is primarily due to sustained investment by the Chinese government and enterprises in the semiconductor sector and the rapidly growing demand for high-performance chips in the Chinese market. Semi noted that the utilization rate of mature process fabs remains a concern, 
showing almost no signs of recovery in the first half of 2024. Semiconductor capital expenditure by FABs was conservative, with a 17% year-on-year decrease in the fourth quarter of 2023 and an 11% year-on-year decrease in the first quarter of 2024. However, a modest 0.7% year-on-year increase is expected in the second quarter, with memory sector capital expenditure anticipated to grow by 8%. As shipments of high-performance computing chips increase and memory chip prices continue to improve, chip sales in the first quarter are projected to grow by 22% year-on-year. Semi expects sales to grow by 21% in the second quarter, with stable chip inventory levels in the first quarter. Clark Sang, Senior Director of Market Intelligence at Semi, stated, Some semiconductor sectors are experiencing a recovery, but the pace is uneven. AI chips and high bandwidth memory are among the highest demand chips, leading to increased investment and capacity expansion in these areas. However, because AI chips rely primarily on a few major suppliers, their impact on overall chip shipment growth remains limited. Boris Medvedev, Director of Market Analysis at Tech Insights, commented, The semiconductor demand in the first half of 2024 is mixed. Memory and logic devices have rebounded due to the surge in generative AI demand. However, the slow recovery in the consumer market and declining demand in the automotive and industrial markets have led to slight adjustments in analog, discrete devices, and optoelectronics products. As AI expands to the edge, it is expected to boost consumer demand, potentially leading to a full recovery in the second half of the year. Additionally, with declining interest rates increasing consumer purchasing power and decreasing inventories, the automotive and industrial markets are expected to recover in the latter half of the year, Medvedev added. The teardown of the Huawei Pura 70 Pro, revealing a 90% domestic component ratio, highlights China's self-sufficiency in producing high-end smartphone components. The performance improvements of the Kirin 9010 processor and the localization of various internal components mark significant progress in China's high-end chip manufacturing capabilities. This represents not only Huawei's success but also a triumph for the entire Chinese semiconductor industry. This development aligns with the growth in global wafer fab capacity. According to Semi's report, mainland China continues to lead in wafer fab capacity expansion particularly driven by the increasing demand for AI and HPC chips, further boosting China's chip manufacturing capabilities. This growth not only meets the demands of the domestic market, but also enhances the competitiveness of Chinese chips in the international market. In conclusion, the high domestic component ratio of the Huawei Pura 70 Pro not only reflects the maturity of China's smartphone supply chain, but also signifies China's rising influence in the global semiconductor industry. As the global semiconductor market recovers and technology continues to advance, China's influence in this sector is poised to expand further, astonishing the West. This progress signifies not just technological advancement, but also an elevation of China's status in the global technology arena, heralding a future of even greater technological prowess. Before we wrap up, I want to hear from you. What do you think about China's rapid advancements in semiconductor manufacturing and the high domestic component ratio of Huawei's Pura 70 Pro? Do you believe that this signifies a major shift in global technological power? How do you think Western companies will respond to these developments? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I can't wait to see what you all think. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more updates on the latest in tech. Thanks for watching.